Hello guys, this is Adit. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram, where I post pictures of my notes and also put out some daily MCQs. The reference time for all the topics that I am going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out and let's get started. In this video, we are going to talk about the kinematics of the gate. Finally, we have arrived to this topic. We will talk about the angles that are seen in gate cycle at each joint that is hip joint, knee joint and ankle joint. So this is the sagittal plane. This is the transverse plane and this is the frontal plane. Okay. So the data in the transverse plane is comparatively less when you compare it to the sagittal plane, especially and also frontal plane. So there won't be much in the transverse plane, but sagittal would be very important. And then we'll go on to the frontal and the transverse plane, which will get covered quickly. So let's start with the topic. We'll take each plane at one time and we'll look at the hip, ankle and knee joint, right? So let's start with the hip. So in the hip joint, there is 20 degree of flexion and 20 degrees of extension. The flexion will happen at the stance phase. So when you're standing and you go for the stance phase initiation, 20 degrees of hip flexion over here, and then the other leg goes for swing, correct? Other legs, other leg swings and your this leg goes back into hip extension at the time of heel off, correct? Over here. So this is what is seen the extremes of ranges, the 20 degree of hip flexion and 20 degree of hip extension is minimum of what you need at the hip joint in the sagittal plane, right? Then going on to the knee joint. At knee joint, you need zero degree of extension at the initial contact, correct? When you are putting your foot first on the ground, you need zero degree of extension over here. And then as you go ahead, your knee will go for a slight amount of flexion at foot flat. Okay, foot flat is over here in the mid stance where your body is taking weight of your whole body, correct? Your legs are taking the weight of your whole body. There is some 15 degree of flexion over here at the knee. And then finally, as you go ahead in the swinging phase, that is you step and then the leg starts swinging, correct? And at the swinging phase, there is around 60 degree of flexion at the knee joint when you're swinging. If this flexion is less, what will happen? You won't be able to clear the ground, right? Your foot dorsiflexion has to be increased or you'll have to increase hip flexion or hike your pelvis to clear the ground. So if you see all the angles over here are interrelated, meaning if your knee flexion or ankle dorsiflexion is reduced, your hip will have to compensate. So all the range of motions are very much required. And if there is reduction in any range of motion, the other joints will have to compensate by increasing their range of motion to clear you off the ground. Correct. So at the knee joint, it's zero degree extension, 15 degree of flexion at the foot flat, and then finally max of 60 degree of flexion at the swing phase. That's the minimum that you need in the sagittal plane. And then finally going for the ankle, you need seven degree of dorsiflexion at the heel off. Now where is heel off? Heel off is when your leg is behind like this, correct? And your heel is off the ground. Here you need around seven degree of dorsiflexion. And then when you are pushing off the ground at the toe off, you are pushing off so you are foot has to be in plantar flexion and that is around 25 degree of plantar flexion to push off from the ground to go ahead for the swing phase. Correct? So that is what is seen in the sagittal plane. Now next moving on to the frontal plane. In frontal plane what is happening is you are standing like this. Okay. When you are in stance phase of this foot, correct, of this leg, your this leg will be bent, right? And you won't be weight bending. So what will happen? your whole body weight will pass through and there will be relative adduction, correct? Over here, if you can see, this is abduction, this is adduction, correct? So there will be relative adduction of your hip on the stance side, correct? Or you can say pelvic drop on the swinging side. And as you go ahead and put this foot on the ground and as this foot goes for a swing phase, what will happen? Exactly opposite will happen this side pelvis will drop and this side adduction will happen. So as you walk, your pelvis is just 
dropping on either side. So that's what I've mentioned over here in frontal plane. There is five degree adduction in the stance phase. Okay, this is the stance phase. This is the normal hip, right? There is five degree adduction in the stance phase or your pelvic drops on the swinging side which comes back to neutral position okay it comes back to neutral position by abduction correct your abductors on this side will be working this is adduction right your abductors over here will be working to get your pelvis back into the neutral position during the start of the stance phase simple so that when you put the this foot down and this foot goes for swing again adduction is going to happen at this joint simple enough right so that's what happens at the hip joint in the frontal plane now going to the next one knee joint over here there is seven degree of knee abduction at the mid swing this is hardly anything abduction would be this movement right adduction abduction adduction so there is seven degree there is hardly anything that move that is the movement that happens during the stance phase at the mid swing and but this is mostly in the neutral position the knee it hardly moves so it's mostly in the neutral position and then finally at the ankle there is eversion at the stance phase so basically your ankle will start something like this your foot will go there is slight amount of inversion at the start and then eversion and then finally when you when you're in push-off phase during push-off your ankle totally inverts and pushes off so first there is eversion okay eversion in the early stance phase and this is followed by proper inversion in the early push off so that is what happens in the frontal plane now moving on to the transverse plane the last one over here in the hip joint what we have seen is hip goes for external rotation in the mid swing and then it comes back to neutral at the initial contact initial contact is this that's when it comes to a uh, neutral position but when you are in a mid swing when you are swinging the leg correct when you are swinging the leg there is slight amount of hip external rotation and that's why how you swing it and then as you step as you are doing the initial contact it comes back to neutral then the knee joint knee joint was relatively neutral and there was slight amount of external rotation in the late stance and then at the ankle there was slight amount of abduction adduction and supination pronation that was seen from the transverse plane so those were the ranges that was seen in the kinematics of the sagittal transverse and frontal plane now there were a lot of angles in this video what you need to understand is sagittal plane is the most important right and what do we have 20 degree of hip flexion correct 20 degree of hip flexion and 20 degree of hip extension and over here in the frontal plane hip has adduction and abduction correct which changes with the side on which you are weight bearing then in the knee the most important thing is you need full extension correct zero degree of extension to get the initial contact then around 15 degree of flexion for the foot flat and then 60 degree which is very important for the swing phase and then we need around 7 degree of dorsiflexion at the heel of now this is very important you must have seen foot drops right where the person is not able to dorsiflex his foot now what happens is if he is not able to dorsiflex his foot he will have to bend his knee even more correct so if there is compensation at the ankle joint you will have to get more range of motion at the knee and sometimes if it's very less you even might have to hike your pelvis or hip hike to clear your foot off the ground and that, and that is what is seen sometimes in stroke patients correct and over here what we saw there was some inversion in the frontal and transverse plane there was some inversion eversion and knee abduction adduction and some amount of external rotation at the hip also which was where the data wasn't that clear so these are the main numbers that you guys need to remember from this video right so with that we finish off this topic that's all for today guys thank you for watching if you like my video please share it with your friends don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also like the video as it really helps me out also let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover and see you soon in the next video